Hallelujah. 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 Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing that we could have ever done. Amen. 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 So grateful and thankful to God for this brand new day, for this glorious day, this day that we have not, that we will not see again. It's, it's, it's unlike any other day that that we've experienced because it's God's mercy unto us. It's his grace afforded to us that we certainly don't deserve. And so I praise God that he saw fit for each one of us to be here this morning, that he gave us the opportunity and privilege to come into this house, gather in his name for the purpose, the express purpose of worshiping him. Hallelujah. So I give honor to God, my Father, Jesus, his Son, and my Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is my comforter and compass. And I honor God this morning, again, just for who he is, for who God is. Yes, he's done so much, but it's about who he is. It's about his presence. And, and, and just we, I thank God for being God today. Before I go any further, I just want to ask you to join me in a very brief word of prayer. Gracious and heavenly God, our Father, we thank you, we praise you, honor you, and glorify you for this daytime opportunity that you've given us, God, to gather in your house one more time. God, we come this morning humble and thankful, God, for your mercy and for your grace. God, I thank you that you saw fit for each one of us to be here this morning. I pray, God, that this word that you have for your people, God, would not fall on deaf ears. God, that we would not simply hear what's being shared, but we would internalize this word, Father, and, and do something with it, Father. Do something about it, God. There are those, God, here today that need to hear from you, God. There are those, God, that are struggling with some issue or concern. There are those, God, who, who want to know that you still love them, God, that you still care about them, God, that you still desire to be in relationship with them, God. So I pray, I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I give God honor once again for, for this day, for this privilege that he's given me uh, to, to be, be your pastor. Amen. 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 I was telling uh, Lady Kay this morning, uh, you know, it's it's altogether different between pastor elect and pastor because I started looking at the schedule. I was like, wow, that's a lot of preaching that uh, that has to happen, right? And so God is now moving and positioning me to to really be diligent about this work that He's called me to. But I am thankful um, and privileged this morning, first and foremost, to this beautiful woman right here to my right in the, in the gold skirt and the black top. And she's just looking so beautiful and so wonderful this morning. My only lady, your first lady, Lady K. God bless you. I love you. I thank God for you and who you are to me, to my babies. Smith girls, I thank God for you all. It is an extreme and absolute pleasure to be your father. I wouldn't ask for any other group of children uh, to parent you, you. You are a joy uh, to me and to your mother, and I thank God for you and what you represent in God's kingdom. To this team of scholars and theologians and preachers, I thank God for each one of you uh, for continuing on with me. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not left unnoticed that, you know, you're still here. Uh, in, 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 in this transition or now uh, moment uh, that we are in, that you're here supporting and continuing to do the work of ministry. And to you, Hope Church, I love you. I thank God for each and every one of you that you thought not robbery to come this morning to this house to worship and celebrate our God together. Amen. And so I want to draw your attention uh, to the, uh, to a particular text this morning found in the gospel according to Matthew, Matthew's gospel, the eighth chapter, and we're just going to peer in on this
this small piece of text, which I pray will help each one of us this morning. Matthew 8, we're going to start at verse 18. Matthew 8, verse 18. We'll go from 18 to 22. I have the New International Version this morning. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. So it reads this way. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. So for the balance of time that I have for preaching, I want us to uh, think on this, this thought, this title, this topic, this thing. Really this question, because God asked me in the middle of, of this study, this question that I'm asking all of us today, what's holding you back? What is holding you back? Now, Jesus had just finished up his Sermon on the Mount, okay? And he had moved down from the mountain now into the region where all these people had gathered. Crowds, the Bible says, followed him. Yeah. And Jesus, he, he was doing such great works. He, was, he had healed a leper. Um, Jesus had um, healed the servant of the centurion. Y'all remember that story, right? The faith of the centurion. The centurion said, Jesus, I know you can heal just by your word. And, and I believe, and, and, and the Bible records that at the word of Jesus, that, that servant was healed. Yes, yes. Jesus took it a step further and, and saw that Peter's mother-in-law was sick from, a, from, a, from an illness, a, a fever, and, and he healed her. And as soon as she was healed, the Bible says that she got up and did what? Started to serve. Yes, yes. And Jesus did many other things. He healed people of their physical ailment, ailment and infirmity as well as late cake, their mental health challenges. There were some folks that were there that were struggling in their mind. They had some possession going on. But Jesus came through and rid them of all of that. So it was no surprise that flocks of folks scrambled to get in the presence of Jesus. They had heard about this prophet from Nazareth, the Galilean, and were excited to get to him because they too wanted to be healed or delivered or set free. Yes. Yes. Jesus had performed miracle signs and wonders which made his popularity grow quickly and his notoriety spread widely. Right. Jesus did those things in fulfillment of the prophetic word according to Isaiah 53, which states, but he was pierced for our transgressions. Yes, he yes. was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought peace was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. Said simply, Jesus, guess what? He was doing what he was supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is in the place where he was supposed to be doing the will that he was called to perform. However, Jesus would not permanently stay in that particular place. Yes. He told his disciples, hey, uh, we need to get ready to go over across to the other side. So, so y'all get ready because my ministry isn't relegated to one specific area. So when Jesus is near it, it, it makes sense that we would hurry up and get next to him so that we can be in contact with him. Yes, yes. Because Jesus, he wasn't going to be there forever. See, he had already told his disciples about the mission, right? That I'm just passing through to accomplish something that nobody else could do. I'm not going to be with you long, so you got to get it now. And so prior to his departure to the other side, Jesus encountered two distinct individuals. One was a scribe, and the other was a disciple. Yes. 
Now the scribe said to Jesus, uh, teacher, right? In other translations it says master, right? Or rabbi, teacher, I will follow you. And not just follow you, I'll follow you wherever you go. Right? Have you ever made that declaration to Jesus? Yeah. Have you ever told Jesus, you know, wherever you go, God, that's Jesus, that's where I'm going. Right. I'll follow you any place. Now let's let's understand uh, who this scribe or what this scribe represented. See, a scribe was a well-educated, well-versed scholar who copied and taught scripture in order to preserve and protect its authenticity and integrity. They were leaders closely associated with Pharisees who antagonized the ministry of Jesus the Christ. So it, it's a bit strange that we find a scribe running up to Jesus declaring that he would follow him. And not just follow him, but he would go with him wherever he went. Yes, yes. Jesus responded. He responded by addressing the scribe's eagerness and fitness for discipleship. Now, New Testament scribes were members of the religious elite and therefore were used to having a regal lifestyle. They enjoyed the privileges associated with their position. See, they walked around the town and were, were prized. They were, they were saluted. They were acknowledged. They were recognized. See, they didn't go into a restaurant and had to wait for a seat. They always had a reservation. People knew who they were. They were well respected. So they were used to and accustomed to a certain type of notoriety, a certain type of living. Well. And to that end, perhaps the scribe thought that he would continue in such existence without interruption or sacrifice. See, Jesus lovingly addressed the scribe's impulsivity with candor. Look at the text. Jesus replied and said, foxes have holes. Yes. And birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Yes. He picked, he pricked the heart of the scribe by laying out the reality of the cost associated with discipleship. Right. See, following Jesus means discomfort. Following Jesus right. meant demotion. Following right. Jesus meant devotion. Yes, yes. Right. Now I want to pause real quick and just say Jesus did not discourage the scribe from believing or following him. Rather, he cautioned him to consider the truth. See, the scribe had an expectation just like some of us. He saw miracles but wasn't ready for the mission. See, all he saw was the glitz and the glamour. He saw what Jesus had to offer and desired to have that as his focus. See, what he had considered is what happens after I decide to follow Jesus? What happens after I decide to leave this place of security and safety? What happens when I don't get recognized the way I used to? When folks aren't coming up to me and greeting me? When I go to the restaurant and I gotta wait like everybody else? When don't nobody pull out my chair or open the door for me? When I don't get the praise and the respect that I'm used to and accustomed to? What happens then? Turn it up. 
ever turn it down. Y'all know the commercial. He ain't got a soft pillow. He ain't laying on, you know, silk linen and all that stuff. Jesus said, I ain't got nowhere to, to lay my head. I don't even have. I have nowhere. Are you sure you want this? Are you sure this is what you really want? Scribe, understand, understand. This ain't this ain't a social club. This 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 ain't something that you just do on weekends. This ain't just something that you participate in and then you say, no, I'm done. I don't want to do it no more. No, this is a commitment. This is this is a yoking of together. This is this is lifelong. This is covenant, yeah. not contract. Covenant means binding. Right, it does. It, it means that when things get rough and tough, we, 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 we stick and stay. Yes. Yeah, right, we, we just don't walk away. We just don't give up. We just don't turn around. We just don't throw our hands up and say, "Hey, well, I tried that. Come on. Didn't work out the way I wanted to, so I'm just gonna walk away." No, no that's not. That's not how that goes. See, we get happy when and when we think about the. The, the all things work together for good to them that love God, yeah. to, to them who are called according to his purpose. We, we're encouraged when we recite, no weapon formed against me, us shall prosper. We shout when we hear, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But what happens, saints? When, when the work together for good means enduring hard times. Yeah. Or, or how about the stress and fright that comes at the forming of the weapon? Or what happens when the plans include sorrow and suffering? Yeah. Yeah. Saints, we sometimes, like the scribe, don't consider the cost of following Jesus. We are held back because we, in our haste, seek to reap the rewards of a relationship with Christ while ignoring the requirements of a relationship with Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we get excited because he's, he's got power. Yeah, he's got authority. He's got the whole world in his hands. We get happy to think about he's way maker, miracle worker. What's the other line? Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. We love that. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. Right? Well, what happens when, when it's time in your time? What happens when, when, that, when, 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 when it's like, Lord, I need you right now? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. That it may be some dark days. It may be some. 
some discomfort. You might be sick in your body for a little bit. Paul asked uh, Christ to, to remove that thorn from his side, uh, but, but he didn't. And see, folks began to judge Paul because of it. If your Christ and your God is so good, then why you got this infirmity? But it ain't for my glory, it's for his glory. Yes. So that I might not boast. Yes. So that I might not take credit. So that I might not get the glory. But that he would get the glory. Amen. Eternal life with Jesus is the guarantee. However, the experience they okay, we have on our way towards eternal life. May be different. It's unpredictable. Nobody's story is the same as someone else's. My story is different than your story is different than someone else's story. But as believers, as followers of Christ, we know our, our, our destination is the same. We all gonna end up in the same place. Right? And there's just one access point. Now hear me well. There's just one access point. I'm not saying that our, you know there's different ways to heaven. No, there's one way to heaven, and that is through Christ. But the journey afterwards may be different. It may look different. See, many of us just want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, but not the fellowship of his son. See, we rejoice on the power of his resurrection. Right, that we can tread over serpents and, and we can we, we can do what God has called us to do, but but nobody wants to think about that suffering, right? Nobody wants to remember that Jesus was a suffering servant, that his whole purpose was to come and suffer at the hands of men so that he might die. Nobody wants to think about that. We put that to the side, and all we look at is, is the glory and the and, 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 and the, the blessing. Established here, 
we must read the fine print and be confident that no matter what, as, as our brother Paul said, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far out that far outweighs them all. And now some of us here may be thinking, you know what, I don't, I don't really fit in that category. I've considered the cost, and I trust God beyond my circumstances and situations. I'm good. You may find yourself identified. You, you, you may think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm straight. You know, I'm not a scribe. I, I, that, that's not who I am. And, and so to that, I say praise the Lord. I'm, I'm thankful and grateful that you don't identify with the scribe. But, but listen, don't, don't check out just yet. Don't, don't, don't turn the volume down so that you can see better. Well. <laughs> keep, 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 keep it up. You may find yourself identifying with the second individual uh -huh. Jesus addressed, which was the disciple. Uh -huh. now, 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 the disciple said to Jesus, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Uh -huh. Now, on the surface, this seemed like a very reasonable request. Uh, God commanded that father and mother be honored, and, and Jewish custom required that the dead be buried, and buried as soon as possible. Uh, Jesus responded to this disciple by saying, follow me, and, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. This exchange, uh, as, as Pastor Emeritus would say, don't, don't read too quickly. Don't, don't just... Don't just you know, rush through that thing because because we have to understand context in order to understand the content. Yeah. Now, now, why did Jesus say this? Well, if we consider the scene, we can with reasonable certainty conclude that the disciple offered this statement as an excuse rather than an explanation. Yeah. In other words, he was trying to delay his discipleship. Uh -huh. Jesus challenged the disciples' hesitancy by confronting his allegiance. See, family was important, tradition was important, culture was important, but Jesus was more important. Allegiance to his will, his way, using his wisdom, superseded those things. Yes. Yes. Again, let's pause. Jesus was not asking the disciple to disrespect or disobey the law, but rather to immediately respond to his call. Because here's the truth. See, if that disciple, if his father was really dead, what was he going out in the streets with Jesus? If his father was actually dead, he would have been at home burying his father. See, what he was doing was just making an excuse to not start what God had asked him to do, what Jesus had asked him to do. And saying something, now we often do that. I know I did when I was called to preach. I told the Lord, no, sir, I won't do it. I don't want to do that. But God got hold of me, sat me down in the middle of the night, woke me up, brought me to his word and said, son, to obey is better than sacrifice. You're going to end up like Saul if you don't do what I'm asking you to do. For too long, I had delayed being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here he was making an excuse, trying to explain it rather than, you know, an explanation. He, he, he knew that his father wasn't really dead. He just used his father. Now, perhaps, and, and this is, this is I said Jesus, okay? This is reading it to the text, because I'll admit, this is just my thinking. Perhaps the father was sick and maybe on his way to death, but still, that doesn't mean that he was supposed to, that he shouldn't have responded to God's call immediately. Jesus was setting standard. Jesus was setting order. Uh, we do know that the disciples' response was the equivalent of him hitting the pause button on the program, which essentially halted any progress. Friends, how many times have we made excuses for why we can't do something? We can't go to Bible study because we have other obligations. We can't come to worship service because we don't want to miss enjoying the nice weather. We can't pay our tithe because we need the money to pay for other things. We can't serve in ministry right now because it's too much of a commitment. We can't forgive that person because we're not ready. We can't love that person because they're mean, evil, and cantankerous. The devil is a lie. If we continue to make excuses, we 
not only disappoint God, we hurt ourselves and others. We stifle our spiritual growth and development. See, the invitation to follow Christ is not something that needs to be methodically scrutinized or painstakingly evaluated. We don't need a committee. We don't need to, 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 to do the pro and con, right? The, right? The, the list. It's very simple. Christ calls us. Remember, there are two calls on our lives. Right? The call from death to life. And then the call to service. Right? So Jesus came to invite all of us, every created being, human being, to uh, come out of death and be in life. Right? Whoever holds on to their life will lose it. But whoever gives up their life for my sake will gain. Right? So it's an initial first call out of darkness, out of evil, out of wickedness, out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But it doesn't end there. God didn't call us to the pubic. You can't say amen and say ouch. God did not save us just so we can sit on our behinds. Their second call is to serve us. So there's a following. There's, there's, there's a right now. When God calls, it may not be at a convenient time. You may be on that job and making a good amount of money, but if God calls you out of it, you got to go.
Are you after me? Or are you after what I've done? You want the works, not the word.
personally experienced the miracles, the signs, and the wonders of Jesus. We all are a testimony to the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. We, like those in this text, have, have been blessed. We are indebted to Christ and can never, ever repay what we owe. We got a balance, y'all. We do. There's a balance that each one of us owe. But guess what? Jesus already paid that balance. Yes. He already cleared the debt. Yes. And even though we could never, ever repay that debt, we should spend the rest of our lives attempting to repay it. Amen. Hear me well. We should spend the rest of our natural lives attempting yes, to repay God for what he did for us through Christ yes, Jesus. Yes, yes. We have a duty to serve him and others. This local fellowship of baptized believers was built on the foundation of service. And we will continue to uphold that legacy. We will continue to be committed to God and serve humanity. Amen. We will continue to be a people maturing in the love of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We will continue to go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. We will continue to be a house of prayer and evangelism. Right. We will continue right. to love, forgive, and serve as a child of the Most High God. We will continue to be the body of Christ. Amen. So the question, question, J. Smith, is what is holding you back? What's holding you back? Is it expectation or is it an excuse? What is it? Regardless of what, what it is, today, my prayer is that we determine to faithfully follow Jesus. Choose love. Choose life. Choose Christ. Amen. 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 Let us stand.
being crucified with Christ so that you no longer live, but he lives in you. If that's you here today, choose Jesus. Choose him now. If you're watching and you've not accepted Christ, confess him to be your Lord and Savior. Admit to God that you are a sinner and that you have nothing within you that can save you. Admit to him that you are hopeless and helpless, but that the hope and help is available to you through Jesus Christ. New life, a transformed life, a free life is available in Christ. Perhaps you're in another group and you are saved where you stand and you have yet to join a local assembly. You are not affiliated with any particular church. Well, I invite you now to join Hope Church, the House of Prayer and Evangelism. We are not a perfect church, but we do serve a perfect God. Yeah. As previously mentioned, we are a people maturing in the love of Jesus. And so we would love for you to come and establish yourself here and serve God while serving others. If you're online, you've been with us perhaps throughout this pandemic and you've considered joining Hope Church, make that choice today. Type in the comments, I want to be a member and somebody will reach out to you. We see there are none, but there's always room at the cross. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. Amen. We are going to get ourselves prepared to participate in Holy Communion. So I ask that you all, um, in this brief moment, draw up or access the Holy Church Covenant, Communion Covenant, that was emailed out to you. Amen.
join online and not join online after Bible study is over and go watch the replay. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, I can't get an amen, amen there, huh? Amen. 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 Yes. While it's going on, we should be engaged in it, right? I, again, I understand we can't be here in person. We got technology that allows us to log in and log on and view, right? So turn off whatever else you're watching or stop whatever you're doing and participate collectively in Bible study because that's how we grow together, right? The word is going forth and we all got to be on the same accord. So be present in that moment. There may be questions that happen or come up for you that can be asked and it may be helpful to someone else. This is a body ministry. It's not a, you know, two or three person said in the message. God did not call any of us to the pews. He called us to be active, to, to, to serve in capacity. The one way we serve is coming together to study his word collectively and corporately. Amen? Amen. I love y'all. I love you. I love you. <laughs> um, I believe that's it. Uh, again, uh, last, last reminder, our Back to Ministry meeting is September 30th at 7 p.m. Please come. Um, be prepared. I'm asking that, again, please, man, please, sir, be in the house. That is what we're calling our mid-year ministry meeting. Um, so come and be here. We're going to praise and worship God together, and we're going to go through and learn what that essentially, what Back to Ministry means for us here at Hope Church. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask our, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to ask our friends to come back and now to, uh, to dismiss us. Thank you for. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, for this ministry. We ask you to continue to bless each and every high and offer that we left in this place today, oh God. Bless each and every member of those who are predicting or, or, or rest, um, thinking about joining this church, Lord. We ask that you bless them, oh God, that they would make a decision based on your Holy Spirit unction, oh God. That you would send the people, oh God, to this congregation that you want to be here, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the children. We ask that you put a special blessing on each and every one of them as they return to school this week, oh God. We ask you to continue to cover them in the blood of Jesus, that they will remember to pray going during the day and after school. We thank you, Lord, for covering them thus far this summer. We ask that you continue to watch over those who are already left the college. We ask that you will continue to bless them and keep them. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask that you bless the preacher and the first lady, oh God, Lady Kay. We ask that you continue to strengthen the first family in this house. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Amen.